I'm not going to lie. This clip from the overlap featuring Roy Keane, I swear to God, this could also be applied to DJ Groupies. The DJ Groupies, the scenester hangers on, um, the fucking clout chasers that kind of, you know, have infiltrated and have kind of polluted and diluted the scene, for lack of a better term, because they're obsessed with standing behind the booth. They're obsessed with being in a green room. They're obsessed with guest lists. They're obsessed with DMing DJs and appearing to be their friends. All this, like, nonsense shit that doesn't really matter because the main crux of a night out, the main place to be in a club is in the club on the fucking dance floor it's not behind the booth it's not to the side it's not there it's not this it's not that the clubbing the clubbing always happens on on the dance floor or in some cases in the smoking area but that's it everything else is nonsense everything else is just like you trying to be a cool guy a cool girl and be in your little cool club and shit and try to divert or mix up what the real true purpose of is of dancing and sharing and communing with other people from around the world and sharing a space and coming together especially in these trying times whatever it may be i just find it all fucking pathetic and all fucking annoying so i love it when Roykin had this to say about masseuse masseuses masseuses in football and how they like to get overly involved and they need to fucking calm down and relax and know their place know their position and take it easy and not act like they're the main character that's the one thing i fucking hate about these fucking hangers on and these clout chasers in the scene fair enough clout chase fair enough do your thing but then don't try and like go act as if like you're part of it don't try to act as if like you're on the agency team or the booking team or your the DJ as well. Like stand back, stand away, stop being overly familiar, relax, take it easy, and chill the fuck out. But let's give it away to Roikin. You know, he's annoying me. You know, the lads who do the massages, they'd all get a bit cocky, wouldn't they? They'd settle into the club or the team. Then they think they're running the show and they've got the music. And then the team wins up and all the masseurs would be out on the pitch. And you're like, just relax. Exactly. What are you digging out the masseuse for? No, exactly. No, they all get a bit cocky. Uh -uh. They all do, every one of them. They want to be in on the bonuses. Just something. I mean, they want I to be know what you're saying. Uh, we're having a night out, free bar. <laughs> they're bringing, then they're coming with all their mates. You're like, you're bringing your mates. You're like Imagine what type of psycho, what type of psycho, and they do exist, by the way. They do exist, right? The type of psychopath that gets brought into something as a favor and then decides to bring their own friends into that thing. Like, bro, what the fuck are you doing? I told you, I said you can come yourself. Maybe a plus one if you're really lonely, but don't go bring all your boys from fucking sixth form to join you so you can fucking freeload. Yeah, you know I mean, grow up, bro. Like, what the hell are you doing? And then you see a lot of these catches in the scene do the same sort of thing. It's not enough for them to get a guest list. Oh, can I get a guest list for my boyfriend, my girlfriend, my best friend? My BFF, my this, my that, my creative director, my... It's like, bro, no, no, no. It's bad enough that you're hanging on and you're begging yourself, but then don't try and bring a whole army with you. Have some fucking dignity. Have some pride. Yuck. Like, relax. <laughs> <laughs> Are we getting medals? No, you're not getting a medal. <laughs> exactly. They're wearing the headphones <laughs> as if they were like players. You exactly, know, exactly. When off the bus yeah, and, and they have the headphones, you're going, relax, <laughs> relax. <laughs> and then they're trying to buy a player's car on the cheap. And all. you're like, lads, <laughs> And that's honestly the best advice I've ever heard. Relax. Act like you've been here before. Chill the fuck out. And it's funny too, because I don't know, maybe because I've been spoiled. And I've had a little bit of that experience of being behind the booth and being in the green room, all this malarkey. It's not that great. It's pretty shit. The green room is basically full of, you know, for lack of a better term, crackheads, right? Essentially. Looking for an excuse to do drugs in private without going to the toilet every two minutes or gossip about whatever scene stuff is going on. The real vibes, the real banter, the real laughs, the real memories are created on the dance floor. Not in a green room. It's not that fun, to be completely honest. In my personal opinion, you're better off dancing in a fucking dance floor. So... I find it interesting when people really do put these type of things up on a pedestal, even guest lists. Like, I don't know about you, but if I'm going on a night out, I'm going to bring money with me. I don't need a guest list to go out. It's nice if you have one, fair enough. But I feel like some people legitimately want guest lists so they don't have to spend money when they go out. They'll, but they'll have a guest list then they won't put their cloak, their coat in a cloak room because they put it in a green room. Then they won't buy any drinks because most likely they snuck some in or they'll start drinking some from someone's rider. 
it's cyclical. Do you know what I mean? It's a really weird way of kind of going out. Part of the going out process, part of the fun is coming back home and checking your Monzo and realizing that you overspent. That's part of the fucking fun. Trying to figure out how you're going to get back home from Angel with five pounds. That's actually kind of fun. Not going there and hanging on or to the hang-ons, trying to jump on people's fucking, you know, Addison Lees and trying to jump into the Uber. It's like, bro, come on. Have some fucking pride. Have some pride. But I should be looking before the match and it'd be, and you've got to do a big game and it'd be having a proper massage like you'd have if you're away with your wife for a weekend. It's really getting back <laughs> going, you cannot be ready to go to battle. Exactly. But, <laughs> No, by the time he came off the, by the, time he came off the, like, the, the bench, he's been getting a massage now for 40 minutes, and he's all kind of like... Look at these lads are getting their arms, and he's coming off the bench, and he's baby oil everywhere. <laughs> and then the game starts, and you're looking around, he can't raise a gallop. Because he's... Oh, but mentally, I need that massage. What? Stop doing the massage. Exactly. I, I, I agree with him. I agree with him. And you could even take it further when it goes to clubs and say... All of that wanting to be on a guest list, all of that wanting to be on behind the green room, all of that wanting to be on the DJ booth, that takes away from the actual fun of the night. Part of the fun of the night is queuing, not knowing if you're going to get in, waiting for an hour to get to the front, then waiting another 20 minutes to get past the girl at the front because she's not sure if you're not too fucked up or, or you're fucked up, getting searched and being nervous that they're not going to find your gear, paying for your ticket, walking up the stairs and making sure you don't fucking, you know, stumble or fuck up your fucking foot or whatever it may be, putting your stuff in a cloakroom or in the lockers and trying to find one or maybe trying to find one that's already open. You can just stuff your coat there in the corner. All that is part of the fun, bro. All that is part of the fun. Bumping into some randoms on the dance floor, sharing a fucking moment with somebody when you lock eyes and you love the fucking tune, maybe exchanging a number with somebody, adding them on Instagram, bus, you know, busting a fucking cigarette with somebody in the fucking smoking area. All of that is what makes it fucking fun. And then maybe losing that person and then see him at the end or at the bus stop on your way back home. Vibes. Not sitting in the fucking groove room like a little, like a little fucking, you know, like a little fucking Shazam gremlin waiting for somebody to fucking bring you in and give you a fucking bump of their shitty ketamine. Like, come on, man. Get your own ketamine, find some friends on the dance floor and have a fucking good time. That's my message from Roy Keane and me. <laughs> big up, big up, big up, Roy Keane. <laughs> big up, big up, big up, Roy Keane.